Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com, and this is a look at Motoblur on the AT&T Motorola Backflip. This is AT&T's first Android device. Motoblur is Motorola's proprietary interface that sits on top of Android 1.5. They can also put it on other versions of Android, kind of like how HTC has HTC Sense that sits on top of Android to kind of change the experience to allow them to differentiate their product from the other OEMs out there. So we're gonna talk about what this Motoblur uh, interface brings, why it's different, and also talk about the home screen configurations on the Motorola Backflip. So we're gonna start off by turning on the device and unlocking it. And I'm gonna zoom in on the screen a little bit so you get a better view. Okay, so the first thing that you'll notice right out of the box uh, on the Motorola Backflip is that it will ask you to sign up with certain social networks. And it can, it can hook up to a lot of social networks. I'll show you the full list in a second. I hooked it up with Twitter and Facebook. So I'm seeing information from Twitter and Facebook and also my exchange account, my email account over here. So right off the bat, what we have here at the top is a widget that lets us quickly update our status on multiple social networks, which I think is quite nice, very easy access. So I can type a message here, I can flip open the keyboard or I get the nice Android on-screen keyboard. I can also choose whether I wanna broadcast it to Twitter, Facebook, or all services. So really in one shot, I can update my status across multiple social networks, which is quite nice. There's some other widgets that you get here. This one is called the Happenings widget. And the purpose behind this is that it will show you a recent quote, happening from one of the social networks you're signed up with. So right now I'm seeing a little uh, little F for Facebook. So this person has updated their status on Facebook. They are using profanity in their tweet or, or in their Facebook status, so we'll have to ignore that. But you get the idea. It will tie into many social networks and bring you the latest that is happening. Over here on the left, we have a stream right into my email. So I can see my recent most email and I can tap on that to bring that up. Swiping to the left and to the right, we have five different panels that we can customize, just like a typical Android device. And let's go through the widgets that you get included on the Motorola Backflip. As, as you get it out of the box, there are already a lot of widgets kind of cluttering up the home screen, uh, but let's take a look at sort of our other choices. So here we have the basic Android stuff, like analog clock, music, calendar, picture frame and search, but any, any place you see a little speech bubble, that is one of the Moto Blur widgets. So we already talked about happenings, we already talked about messages. Uh, we're gonna show you news in a second, and there are some other Moto Blur things here. Social status, that's what I showed you, that you can update your status on multiple social networks, and also weather, it's an AccuWeather widget, I'm gonna show you that in a second as well. Let's see what else we can do from here. If we tap and hold, we can also add shortcuts as you can do on any Android device to a URL or to a contact or program. You can also do change the folders or of course change the wallpaper to something that you enjoy. So let's look at these other widgets. Here's one of the news widgets from Motoblur and the idea is that you can swipe to the right and swipe to the left to see the news stories, a very nice way to sort of flip through news, I think. And from here, you can tap on a headline. It will open up the web browser and show you the full story. We'll talk about the web browser in the next video. Okay, and let's go back. Here is a widget for your music, not really unique to the uh, backflip here. And you can see this stuff has changed over here on the right since I've done this video. It says it was updated two minutes ago, and this time we have changed again. Before it was from Twitter, now it's from Facebook. So it's constantly updating here. To the right, we have a Yahoo search widget. We have another news widget, which is kind of general news, and we can swipe to the right again. Nice little smooth interface. We have an analog clock. We have a weather widget, but this is just the standard AccuWeather widget. We can swipe, or actually tap down here to change it between detailed forecast and the extended forecast, so it's nice to have that. And over to the right, we have tips and tricks and getting started kind of stuff to help you get going with your backflip. So if we tap tips and tricks, again, we get this little pop-up bubble interface that reminds you of the Moto Blur logo. Get little tips on conserving battery life and that sort of thing. I don't know why it keeps going back to that screen. And over here, we can just look through some getting started articles. So let's talk about some other aspects of the Moto Blur interface. If we swipe to the right, we have a thing here called account settings. And this is what you get to set up all the social networks for Motoblur. And take a look at all of the networks it supports. It's quite amazing. So we've got Facebook and Google and YouTube and different email accounts and Picasa and Skyrock. And you get a little check mark to show which of these services are currently being pulled from. And they, they're all saved under a Moto Blur account, so presumably if you were to hard reset your device, you could get all of this information back without having to uh, reset up all of these social networks, which is quite a nice feature. 
Let's go into the application tray. I'm going to show you a few things. Here's happenings. And this is kind of a more extended view of what you saw before. So in here, I get a stream of all of my social networks. Some people may like this, some people may not. I personally like to keep my Facebook and Twitter stuff se separate, uh, but you can actually just scroll down and see little icons, the T or the, uh, or the F, depending on where the, the update is coming from. And let's say that you find something that you like, um, you can tap on it, you will get the entire tweet or the entire Facebook status update, and you can actually reply to that person really quickly. So this is kind of how the, the Twitter integration works. Very simple, uh, but it works quite nicely. So that was happenings. Let me show you the context menu because it actually integrates with all different sorts of areas. So I'm not sure that I like this too much. The contacts menu is pulling from my, my normal contacts from my email account. It's pulling from Facebook and it's pulling from Twitter. It's, it's a little bit awkward because most of the people that I correspond with on Twitter, I don't really know personally. So I don't necessarily need to see them included in my contacts on my phone. And furthermore, they don't have any sort of phone number associated with their Twitter information. I'm not really sure why Motorola decided to do this. It's just way too much. I mean, it's an endless list of contacts from all of my social networks. You can do some things to sort of filter this out. Of course, you can search for a particular contact so that you can find the one that you want um, so you don't have to be looking at a sea of contacts all the time. There's also some interesting buttons down here at the bottom. So if we go to history, we are taken to a list of the history of all of my communication on any social network in any SMS and any email. It's kind of creepy actually that it's doing this um, and it, it really doesn't serve any purpose in my mind but if I were to scroll to the top you would see that I recently sent a text message to this person, this person, I recently had a call with this person, I just got an email from this person and so on and so forth. So it may be handy if you don't correspond with that many people but for me it's just a massive, massive list of stuff that I really can't get much value from. And finally, there's a button over here that says status. And quite simply, this will tie again into your contacts and try to pull the person's latest status, whether it's from Facebook or Twitter or any other social network. And it will just display a little status right underneath and you can tap on the person's name to bring it up. Whoops, went a little fast there. And just like the previous screen, we can see, uh, we can at reply to the person. We can also drill down more precisely to see uh, this person's list of tweets and that sort of thing. So overall, I think Motoblur is an interesting concept, that of bringing together many different kinds of social networks into one place. But at the same time, it just, it's a little bit chaotic. Uh, and, and not very productive for me. I really want to have a great email experience. I don't care, care so much about knowing what everyone's doing at every second through every different social network that I subscribe to. But I think for a, for a lot of younger people that are really into social networking, that are very much into communicating with their 1,000 friends, uh, the Motoblur interface may be a winner. But for me, I think it's a little bit too much. So that was a look at the Moto Blur interface. Coming up soon, we're going to talk about the web browsing on the Motorola Backflip and talk about the built-in programs and the overall experience, including battery life and performance and call quality. So that's it for now.